I'm trying to live until I die. Uh, come connect, you know it's a lewd state of mind. Yeah, yeah. Talking traveling, if you want to fly. Fitness and finance, yeah. living a better life. Keep it raw, no filter. Yeah. Living with no limit. no limit. Thank you for tuning in. Come on, let's get it. Uh. And we're up in the hot seat today. We've got the 2020 New Zealand barbecue champion, Mr. Brendan Resmer. Welcome back to Lewis State of Mind, mate. So we're going now, we're live? We're done. Cool. We're in. Well, yeah. awesome. This is it, you can talk. Take five. You can yeah. use all cool. your you can use all your words, mate. It is so good to have you back. And of course it's a, a, about a year since you were here last. Yeah, pretty much a year to the weekend, so meat stock weekend, so Meat Stock Bendigo twenty twenty four. That'll be interesting. I haven't been to Bendigo before, so it's apparently it's a nice little town. Yeah, I've it's heard so. It's fun. like it's an old, oldie, timey hmm? gold mining town. So the the really nice, beautiful buildings. So that'll be nice. It's going to be a great weekend. The weather's going to be great. There's a lot of tickets sold. There's going to be a lot of punters there this weekend. Yeah, it should be good. It's always a good weekend. I mean, Jay Beaumont always puts on a great event. So yeah, we're just looking at those um, artists up there, and I, I the only one that I actually recognise is Casey Barnes. I've heard of him, uh, and I think he's playing on Sunday night. So we're actually staying Sunday night, so we might be able to see Casey. Mate, it's it, it's a it's a two day event, Saturday Sunday, yeah. And there's a lot going on. There's a lot going on. So we, there's a lot going on. Yeah. We've got you and your guys doing the competition barbecue cooking. Yes. For Saturday and Sunday, two different yes. competitions. We've yes. got all this entertainment. We've yes. got vendors. We've got. Do they have bull got, riding? They got yeah, bull riding. Bull riding. Yep. Uh, hot rods. Um, you got the tattoo guys out there. Tattoos. Are you uh, going to get... Dude. I might get another one. Dude. You've just turned 50, by the way. Happy birthday. Yeah, thank you. 50 years old, you got your first tattoo. I have. Wow. You're really just breaking out of that shell, a, aren't you? And it's a, uh, it's a meat stock one too, so... Well, that's apt, isn't it? I mean... It is. I mean, it's been a big part of my life since 20, 2017. Went to the first one, so... I know. Auckland, as a spectator. And then we, we came we, over... We were there. We came over in March to Melbourne yep. with, with Scotty and caught up with you there too. So I think we sort of got the bug from there. It's like, well, we're going to have to do this the following year, which was 2019. So I think we uh, we got Jared to make a octo pit and shipped it over and it's gone all downhill from there really, hasn't it? It's been a long journey, hasn't it? When you it think about five, it. It's only been five years, so five, six years, I mean. Oh, know, really? It feels like It seems 10, longer, 15. mate. Yeah, well, when you think about it, they, they chuck that COVID fucking shit in amongst it. Yeah. And we, it's funny because we, so in Melbourne, uh, next weekend is the Grand Prix. Yes. And the year that COVID shut everything down, we were actually oh. driving past we were. Albert Park when the gates were about to open on Friday morning for um, the Grand yes. Prix. When we heard on the radio that everything had been cancelled and shut down, now we carried we carried on to Flemington and, and set up, but we got shut down yeah, yeah, a couple yeah. of hours after that because the writing was on the wall. But fuck, that seems like such a long time ago. It That's seems. Right, yeah. like I mean, the, ramica long time. the ramifications going on from that now is just oh, uh, just fucking ridiculous. We're not going to talk about that. Fuck no, that. No, let's not do that. Fuck happy that. times, happy times. <laughs> <laughs> happy days. Now you've turned fifty. Yeah. You've come back looking leaner and meaner. You've lost a lot of weight. You're looking fantastic. What what happened? What what was the what was the what was the colour? Something's changed. I don't Something's know. changed. I think you just get to that sort of that point where you're just sort of sick of being, you know, a bit overweight. Everything just seems a bit more uncomfortable. You just you know can't sort of do the same shit you sort of used to do. And I mean, you just get into that groove, you know, either going down to the pub having a few beers. It's just you know. It's just not very, you know, it's not very, you know, good behaviour, really, I mean. And 50's, but, um, a, 50's a light bulb moment, isn't it? It is, yeah. I mean, I, I struggled with it for a little bit. Um, I don't know I don't know exactly what it was, but it just felt like this big impending wall of doom, you know, coming straight towards me. And it just, I, I probably didn't know how to process it. I, I, I don't know why. I mean, everything was sort of, you know, going reasonably good and that business was good. I think it was just, you know... Um, well, how you described I, I, it, how I, I, you described it, that, that pending wall of doom was yeah. exactly how I felt. Yeah. I mean, my situation, and, and, and we'll probably go into that a little bit later on down the track, um, my experience is, is same, same, but different to you. Yeah, yeah. And probably not different to a lot of other people that, a lot of other men that have got to that point in their life and they've gone, something's got to fucking change when they, ultimately mm. it's about realising your mortality. 
and how much time you may or may not yeah, have that's left. That's a good point, yeah. How much time you got? Because yeah. the thing is, the thing is, and, and, and I always said this, and I've mentioned it before, uh, mentioned to my, uh, talked to my wife about it. I gave myself 65 years. So that was my number. And anything after 65 is a bonus. It's the icing on the cake. But I've got in my head that 65's, I've got to get my shit, whatever I want to get done, mm. I've got to get it done before I'm 65. Okay. That's my shut off. Now yeah. that's that, you may sound you may say that that sound that's 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 reasonable. It's not reasonable. Yeah, I mean, I people it. people think about their own mortality differently. Yeah, a lot of people tend to ignore the fact that they are going to die one day, but they do that, they do nothing about living life. So that's to sort of get comfortable by sixty five, and then just sort of cruise from there. No, no, it's get everything done that I want to do oh, okay, before right, I yeah, okay. before oh, yeah, I yeah, die. Yeah, 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 I'm with you. Yeah. At sixty five, because it was yeah, funny. You remember the remember the first podcast that we had? We had Russell in here, Rusty. Yeah, 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 yeah. He thought he was going to die at forty That's because right, his dad because his yeah, dad yeah, died yeah, at forty, yeah, yeah, and he had sure. it in his head. Yeah, yeah. You know, it my situation was was not derived by a, a similar situation to him. Mine was just a figure. It was like, okay, I understand the male the, the male. Mentality about life: We work hard. We we take a lot of risks. We generally don't look after ourselves physically, and mentally. You know, as as a conglomerate, as a group. Yeah. So it, you want to? I want to get as much out of the years that I've got. And yeah. and if I if I set a time frame to do all that in, I'm going to sit back and I'm going to be pretty happy at the end of it, knowing that I've got a few more bonus years. Yeah. You know. Okay, cool. To be able to do what I to, to do whatever yeah. but to see the other thing too is that and, and you would have, you realize this as well is that you, you, your your physical being your mobility your your uh, your your just your movement as you get older is restricted if if you're not doing regular exercise if you're oh, not sure yeah you know, if you're not looking after yourselves mm. and and like with you what the 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 weight loss is is you basically saying to yourself to your body Hey, we've got a journey that we're on, mm. and we want to be in tip-top condition. Oh, absolutely! I mean, the fucking health system's not getting any any easier, or you know, to deal with on that. So, no one's going to look after you. You've got to look after yourself. Oh, exactly. And, and that's diet, exercise. Exactly. It, it sounds boring as, but I mean, you know, well, you've got to make your own fun along the way. It's the fundamentals, and yeah. as you say, as you as you get older, like we are, you realise yeah. the importance of that. You know, and we've yeah, and, and that's the great thing about Lewis is we've had people in here from from um, all walks of life mm. and in and, and different industries and it's about how to live a better life and how to live a longer life because we're not we're not here for a long time and, I know. and this is this is not a test run. We're not do, we're, this is not you know, this is not a read through a rehearsal. Yeah. This is the real fucking deal, mate. I know. We're doing it, you know. Yeah. So, so as, as, as part of turning fifty, it's just like this is the new a new chapter. So it's what, like how did you turn? How did you turn it? You turned it fifty. Fuck oh, it and f- oh, so that's, and that's my motto this year: is fifty yeah. and fuck it. Fifty and fuck. So it. I mean, all, all this time, you know, you, you're sort of setting up business, you know, you're you're doing things, you're getting the family all sorted on all this, and you know, you're sort of projecting a sort of you know business sort of type um, projection to everybody. You're sort of building up clientele. You've got a lot of important clients. Um, you know, having a, a tattoo at some stage if you were younger might sort of put, you know, those yeah. those type of clients off you and that. And sort of now I've turned 50, it's just like, well, I've got no one to impress now. I've, I've got my clientele, it's just like, well, fuck it, I'm going to start doing the sort of shit that I want to start doing, you know. So that, this is all sort of part of it. It's all these things that I've wanted to do all these years and uh, now's the time to do it. So, you know, well, I'm it's a, it's young, fun, so. It's funny, yeah, I mean, I totally understand and, and can relate to exactly what you're saying. Um, it's funny how you get to like an age like fifty. Mm. Yeah, you know, forty doesn't do it for you, but fifty does. Yeah, it's just a catalyst. I, I found it easier to deal with because I started over, over Christmas and New Year. I sort of broke my broke my life down into the to the decades. Like, so started working at seventeen apprenticeship. So sort of seventeen to, to thirty. Like we had that. We had a massive building um, decade where we were just building up. You know, a lot of property stuff. You know, working seven days a week uh, in the business as well as doing up houses and stuff um, and then getting married at 30 you know kids between sort of 30 40 
and then between sort of 40 and 50, it's just been a lot of, you know, getting getting the kids going and and a lot of that redevelopment sort of stuff, so a lot of easy easy sort of work that we sort of had to organise. Mm. And then so 50 to 60, uh, we've got all this equity built up. We've got to start using it. We've just sort of bought, bought our first um, commercial property. So we're just looking to, to use all that all that equity that's been building up over the last, you know, 20 years. Yep. We've, we've just got to... So by 60, I've got a certain figure that I want to get to. Uh, and then 60, I pretty much want to, you know, retire from, you know, what we're doing business-wise. Yep. Maybe do a bit of property stuff. So 60 to 70 is probably going to be, you know, grandkids. And God knows in the, in the world where they're going to end up. But, you know, you've sort of just got to allow for that sort of stuff. So it's just time for... You know, for us to um, you know have a bit of fun and it's a great plan. And it's a great live. plan. And look, look to start living for for me to witness this and in, in your lovely wife, my sister Wendy. Um, it's just it's just a breath of fresh air. It's 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 great to see somebody blossoming, as I put it, and just exploring more life or or more of what's to be offered in life. You mm, know, as you say, sure. you've 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 laid the foundation. You, you've been sensible across the board. And through the decades, and you've set yourself up to, to have this platform to, to spring off into this new fuck it fifty stage, you know. And as you say, the next couple of decades, um, you're going to be sitting pretty sweet, which is which I think is hopefully I think it's ev- well I think it's everybody's hope to just be comfortable and happy. Mm. And the one thing I found out um, through my journey, um, it's a bit it's about being happy. It's about being content. And not always chasing your tail or chasing the next fucking you know. Yeah. There's 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 still a lot of stuff that I want to achieve, but money's never been a factor. Never it's never factored into decisions that I've made, um, and it's 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 not as important as some people place it in their life. Like a lot of people, th- their their lives evolve around money and having it or not having it or 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 using it to buy stuff. To increase their stature within their group. Yeah, but you can only sort of say that now because I mean we did the you know we've done the fucking hard yards you know between twenty and thirty. I mean, you know I was pretty much you know starting up a business when you were you know starting up businesses and that. So, you know I mean there was plenty of times you know when there was you know how am I going to pay this week's you know wage bill? I mean it was literally oh. down to the last dollar and overdraft. Everything's like drawn out exactly. You know it's like you know ten ten twelve years of absolute fucking I guts. Know. You're I know. Out, well, man. as I said, and I've said it, I said it earlier in, a, in another know. podcast, is that I actually got to the point earlier in my in my business career that I'd stop worrying about money and because I couldn't sleep and it was it was it was making me physically ill, and mm. it was like I can't I can't let it rule what I can't let it dictate who I am. Mm. Now I understand you need it. I was in business. You have to have it to to keep the to keep the wheels turning. But it was not my main driver. My main driver was focusing on how I can be a better businessman and how I can do sure. more business. You know, yeah. um, and that's and I've sort of carried that through in in my life. It's as I said, money's not important. And if and and, and the people that talk to me about Lord Studios, it's not about money. It's about being able to provide a service and give back in, in a little bit of a in some way, but f- facilitate conversations like we're having today. And educate, mm. um, and I'm glad to be able to be in that position now to be able to do that. Yeah, I've slugged my fucking guts out for for thirty years, mm. you know, and it's and, and it's been a grind. But I, I don't think I, I don't think I would change it or take it back or do anything differently because that's who I am. No, definitely. You just get into that bloody that that mindset. Oh, eh? you've just got to you've got to, just got to keep grinding it out. But it's, when um, you see when you see, but when you see the re, the results and the rewards from it, and as I said once again, not just the money, yeah, not just the money. You don't see that other, at the time though. Eh? It's just a, it's just that survival, you know, instinct just kicks in, eh? And you just got to just keep gutsing it out, grinding, grinding. Well, grinding. you've got it. You've got it, as you say. You've well, got what, what, what's the other option? You six, know? six, seven days yeah. a week, and and how many hours it takes. You know, you don't go home because you finish what you're doing. You go home because. Um, you have to go home to sleep. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah, yeah. You, know, you yeah. keep grinding out. So yeah, but look, mate, I, as I said, I wouldn't, I wouldn't change it. And it's, it's been great seeing your no success regrets. as well too. I mean, I remember the day, no regrets. Have we got a copy of that tattoo? No regrets. No. No. We don't have that. 
That's that's not one I've got in mind either. <laughs> oh, it's a different no, one. It's not. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, I wouldn't I wouldn't change a thing. It's been no. very very satisfying. A lot of people. I mean, like anybody getting into business, the, the, like the, the the business business the definition of, of business is a little bit different to back in our days. Um, um, I mean, based around the trades, but I mean, anybody can sit in a cafe behind a laptop today and produce a passive income doing something online, and and they think they're working hard now. I'm sure yeah. maybe I'm sure maybe they think they are working hard. You know? but, I mean, back when we were, you know, I mean, I got laid off twice, and there's no other option but for me to set up my own business because there was there was nothing else out there. I remember that. I remember so, the day know, that you came like two two fucking recessions. It's just you know. Yeah. I remember the day you came and saw me. Yeah, yeah that's right. And yeah, said, this yeah, is yeah. what I want to do. I was yeah, like, fuck, true. do it, dude. Yeah. You know? It, yeah. How hard is it? Well, it's, you were doing it, so. It's not, well, yeah, how hard can it be? <laughs> it's like some idiot like me can go start up a business and, and, yeah. and employ people. So, um, yeah. fuck, yeah. 50, man, we've, we've come, we have come a long way. Yeah. And, one, and one, of, one of the shit things that, you know, we're not good at doing is like celebrating those those sort of those successes and that along the way too. You just sort of like you know get it done onto the next thing. No, so I, I think that's been a that's been a bit of a you know just going back and just actually you know taking stock of what you know the, some of those achievements have been over the years as well. So you know yeah, look celebrating celebrating is great for certain things. I'll I'll celebrate a birthday. I'll celebrate another lap around the sun. I won't celebrate a sale or a or a or a, or a figure achieved or a or a or a year in business. Yeah, that's one thing you have been good at doing, though. Is like the, I mean, I always remember those, those those you know big parties at you know the sign company and and Hastings and that mm. you know you're doing. I mean, that's always sort of been a yeah. If I'd, there was a milestone, if there was an opening, or a, you know, if you did do some, that's that's one thing you have been good at doing. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of people like do it. you didn't celebrate. You haven't celebrated your fifty years. No, nah, no, was, and um, and neither really did your weird. wife, Wendy. Did you? No. See, that for me, that's no. something to celebrate. Yeah, That's something, I and it's just yeah, it's just a weird thing to get your head around. I mean, we have got you know something organised a bit, but later on, sort of you know April and that, but it's just going to be a very, very small group of close friends that we'll sort of shared a bit with over well, the. Well, I didn't get an invite, so no, you said it. Well, I'm fucking here now, aren't I? So this is it. <laughs> hey, you took me out for dinner last night. So oh, mate, that go. was look, that was amazing. That was great. Mr Miyagi's for anybody that's listening. Mr Miyagi's down Chapel Street. It is just absolutely divine. Which is absolutely, which is just a couple of doors down from uh, Chapel Street. Sellers. Chapel Street. Sellers. Oh, hey, first. hey, Chapel Street. Sellers. Exactly. I was, I was Buck into fast. the Buckfast. Good work. Yeah, Cheers, mate. Happy birthday. I love the Congratulations stuff. Congratulations to Buckfast. Yeah, it was good to see Rob last night, wasn't it? It was one thing. It was one of my first stops when I come to Melbourne and stay at your place. Yeah. Got to go and see straight, Robert. Straight down Chapel, Chapel Street, Street Sellers. Sellers. Yeah. Yeah, Rob and Joe. Rob and Joe. It's a great spot, man. I love that place. It was funny because you were sitting there, you were sitting there last night watching all the females go past in their active wear. No, was it? Going, well, what's going? What's going on? It's like, does the people wear active wear out? It was definitely now, a yoga they... night last night for sure. There was there a were... lot of lot of mumble pants going on. <laughs> <laughs> well, he was. No, no, and dogs, can... mumble pants, and dogs. <laughs> that's Chapel Street. Fucking well, that's dogs cha everywhere. That, that's Chapel Street to a team. Mumble yeah, pants and, and dogs. At least they pick their dog shit up, though. Well, exactly. Not like a niece, eh? Yeah, oh, that's French. The same with it. Me and Mav just come back from Italy. Not yeah. To, not to just note. Yeah. How'd that go, Mav? <laughs> yeah, how'd that go, Mav? Good. Yeah, yeah, good trip. Yeah, good go? trip. <laughs> <laughs> they, yeah, they don't pick up their dog shit in the snow either. Oh, so, really? So. Fuck. It's disgusting, eh? So it melts and, the, and there's just Ugh. shit everywhere. Jesus, God, don't... Fucking Europeans, what is it with them? Yeah, I don't know. Actually, I shouldn't... Well, I think we've got a couple of listeners in Warsaw, actually, so... Warsaw? Yeah. Okay. I know, it's weird, isn't it? We get these, notif we get these notifications on the website when the, when people log in there. And yeah. We've got, some, we've got some people around the world. Nice. I'm not going to say cool. we've got a good following. Maybe they've just... Stumbled on it. So is Warsaw the weirdest place you've got? I think it is. Germany we've nice. had, Belgium. Yeah. Um, yeah, maybe they've just mistyped something. We're trying to find lewd or something. <laughs> lewd, lewd axe and they, and they stumbled on lewd. Like, what's this? Yeah. What is this? 50, man. 50. It is, yeah. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I'm really excited about this this new chapter. So one of the... One of the so I'm booked in for more tattoos next next Thursday back in Hamilton at Skink's uh, studio. You've got 
and, and one, of the, one of the ones is like a 20 it's like a block it's a 2024 so obviously that's going to be the, the new chapter so yep. 2024 the year of the new chapter and i want all these things like visible because i don't want to forget and i always want to be reminded you know just to keep keep grinding you know keep yeah. you know taking chances you know just take every experience that comes along so I, I just you know just want blinkers off and just you know well people people that get tattoos life. they understand that they understand exactly what you're saying yeah people that don't have tattoos don't they don't understand i mean like mm. as you say with like i've got maverick on my arm so yeah, when yeah, i yeah. when i when I get dementia, I can remember Maverick's who he is. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> who's, who's this Maverick dude? Because <laughs> he's never going to come and fucking see me. He'll put me in a home and yeah, forget course. about me. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, no. Nah, well, well, well you're time will for. tell. Yeah. <laughs> time will tell, yeah. mate. Time will tell. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I mean, 50 years without any sort of um, ink on me at all. And, you know, uh, people get, you know, lots of meaningful stuff and, and that on there, which is, you know, really cool. And, well, that's exactly what you're cool. doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the next sort of three are going to be, you know, you there's sort of, a couple of, you know, you know, ones that are just going to be. For, so he's going know, bang, bang, bang. So you had, yeah, had the much. first one. Then, but yeah, so I'm getting you. a phoenix, phoenix in here. So that's pretty self-explanatory. Do you actually enjoy the pain of getting tattooed? Uh, it didn't actually bother me because I've got that bloody um, that thing with needles where you get all fainty and. There's a, there's a word for it. I keep on fucking forgetting it. Too. It's pussy. But it honestly didn't bother me. It was just like a, a scratchy type thing. And it was just like, yeah. I find it, I find it, was it weird. I find it quite lethar- uh, not lethargic, yeah. uh, cathartic. That's yeah. the second time I've fucked that up on the yeah, podcast. Yeah, Cathar- yeah. Very, it's very, yeah. it, uh, and, it is, and it can get addictive. Yeah. And it's expensive. Do you mind if, like, did they charge well, you a lot for that? That was 250 I mean, the, it's not so much. I mean, it's, you know. Full of colour and oh, it, it, Jake but, does a great job. But the thing yeah, is, like this, doesn't. this this half sleeve that I've got now, yeah. I, I think I paid maybe fifteen hundred dollars for it in 20, yeah. 2013. Oh, really? But that goes right up to your fucking shoulder, though, eh? Yeah, but still, it still classes a half sleeve. But what I'm saying is that oh, this yeah. this today yeah, would yeah, be yeah, probably yeah, three yeah. or four times the price. Yeah. Yeah, you know, but depending well, it's a lot of time. Depending, on, well, the thing is, it wasn't a lot of time, and he oh, banged really? it out. He banged it out really quick. Like, how long did it take to do that? Oh, fuck. 20 minutes, 30 minutes. Yeah, it's nothing, isn't it? That, that was about 30, 40 minutes, actually. Yeah. 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 Well, the time they do the outline and then the, the shading and that, it's, yeah. Hmm. Mate, that, you're going to be fucking covered with them next time. You're oh, going yeah, to look like Post Malone next time with a couple of your, <laughs> your meat stock over your eyebrow. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's just, you know, fuck it. <laughs> Mate, good Who on cares? you. As I said, I fucking love, I love seeing it. Yeah. I love seeing you blossom. It's <laughs> unbelievable. It's unbelievable. Well, you sort of get to that point where, you know, you don't really sort of give two shits about what people think about you, just, you know, living life for you. And that's taken yeah. taken me a lot to get my head around as well, so. Yeah, a lot of people struggle with that. I mean, yeah. the, the, a lot of the, I don't give a fuck with so. the, 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 yeah, a lot of people, and especially these days with younger people and the internet and social media, all they want to do is try to impress somebody and mm. they're trying to impress somebody with this, with the, with this, clickbait with these videos with these reels and they don't even know who they're trying to impress yeah. and you find and you find a lot of people that that post and do a lot online are actually probably very fucking sad yeah they're just looking for approval from from yeah. people that don't even fucking know or care about them it's funny you should bring that up actually because i've been um I, that's what i would have thought about what these you know so i've got art choose 18 this year claudia 16 and you know obviously knowing mav um i can't believe uh the confidence level that these young kids have got these days. And I think they do see all through that bullshit, you know, really, really quickly. Um, I mean, I've seen Archie's oh. mates and Claudia's mates and, uh, the, you know, they are really, really nice, you know, young young kids. Well-adjusted you kids. Know, yeah, well, young look, adults, really. Yes, we are very lucky, but that comes down to the parenting as well, too. I yeah, mean, possibly, a, but I mean, there's, there's you a know, lot there's, of... There's, you know, you, they, they spend a lot of time in their phones and social media and all the bullshit. Yep. But just to, I think they can just see through that so quickly, and they just don't, they, they just don't give a shit. Just their confidence and just how they, you know, how they, how they're gonna, uh, you know, I've got no no qualms about them sort of taking taking over. Really, it's um, it's it's, it's been awesome to see. Really then that, awesome that, to see. You're talking about that generation that taking generation, over and, yeah, and taking yeah, the yeah. helm. Yeah. I think I I think you're looking through uh, rose coloured glasses because yes, you've got well adjusted children, and I'd like to think the same about Maverick is that that they're not trying to do something online that they that they can't do normally or naturally in their own environment. Mm. 
So you're talking about this confidence and in, in this in this ability to see through bullshit. That's been taught to them by you and 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 your wife. Yeah, possibly, but yeah, it's um. I mean, just even all their mates, you know, they just don't, you know, if somebody stops up and, you know, everyone gives them lots of shit, they just, you know, it's just like water off a duck's back. They don't all get all upset and, you yeah, know, yeah. Have, a, have, a, have a sort of a crack or anything like that. They just all laugh it off. And Well, well kids, um, kids, mates and groups really that they hang around them is, is, is really important. I mean, oh, you, for sure. you, get, you get somebody falling in with the wrong crowd and it's oh, definitely sure. yeah. going to be, you know, detrimental. Yeah, but I mean, that's always going to be like that. I mean, there's kids like that, at, you know. When we were at school, and oh, they didn't, so, they're, they're never gonna. It's never gonna change. There's always gonna be one dick or yeah. two, a <laughs> few. It's scary. It is scary. It is scary, though. I mean, it's it's a, it's a completely different. Uh, the, the 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 generation, the younger generation now, as you say, they've they, they've got all this information at their fingertips. Some of them are even dumber than they should be, um, even though there is all this information available. They just want instant gratification. And they spend that much time on their phones, they have no idea about what, what the sky looks like. Yeah, you know, and, yeah, true. and it's scary. But but what, but once again, it comes down to that: the parents. If if as a parent you let your child sit on an iPad or a phone for long periods of time without going out and exercising and being active, whose fault's that? Mm. Yeah, it's true. not the child's fault. The child doesn't know any better. Mm. You know, that's what you're there as a parent to do: is to teach. Your children, the difference between right and wrong, and and what's healthy and what's not healthy, and you know, even though it's a fucking minefield out For there. Sure, it is. It, it is. It is. And sometimes it's just too easy just to you know sit back and you know work and you know the mum and dad are working and. Well, I mean, you you look at you the state of the state of the play now with inflation and the cost of living, you know. We got parents out there just working their guts out to make sure that they make their mortgage payments that are fifteen hundred, two thousand dollars, two and a half thousand dollars more than what it was, you know, twenty four months ago because of inflation. Yeah, yeah, but shit. I mean, when I bought my first house, I mean, half my wages was going into paying the mortgage, you know, fifty percent. So, yeah, I was getting what I was getting three sixty, three sixty a week, and hundred and eighty that was going <laughs> to the bank, <laughs> and half of that would have been interest. Once again, Possibly. Yeah, yeah. probably even three quarters. It would have been three to, quarters. Yeah, so you just had to work your ass off to, you know, do it up and sell it and move on. But you know, well, you, hate, you made you some, know. you made some, you made some, some great decisions, some great choices with with what you did with your money. You know, you were smart. It did so, but it just had who, to make sense, though, didn't it? I mean, you, you, did you, you did you get to do the numbers? Did you get that from your parents? Did your parents? No, I probably I, that? you were probably my first inspiration about doing that. When you bought that um, that house on Cornwall Road and you picked it up and moved it to the back and sold the front section, so oh really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Fuck, that was a long time ago. Yeah, yeah, long, long time. Did that house ever get finished? Or is it still sitting there half done? What your one or my one? No, no, my one. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> uh, we were not. I don't think we're going to go into that. No, I don't we think we're going to go right. down that road. But I'm just saying, you know, going to go down uh, that road. Yeah. Fucking hell, fifty years old, man. What else has changed? So I've basically known you 33 years, and if I met you when I was like wow. 17, 18. Yeah. Mate, you're, you're not quite up there with Glenn or Rusty, but no, no, you're, doing, you know. you're doing pretty good. Yeah, yeah. If they die... <laughs> <laughs> I'm next in line, am yeah, I? Six. Well, if they, if they die, you can catch yeah. up to them. Nice. You know, nine million years, and just hope that I don't fucking die, because then you won't win. <laughs> 33 years. Jesus Christ. When you look at it like that, yeah. Well, I've got a couple of mates I've known. I mean, I've known Scotty since I was four, so that's fucking forty-six years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Scotty and Ferg and all that. I went to fucking kindy with Ferg. Mm. It's good to have those Crazy. friends. It's good. I remember. Yeah. I remember. I remember saying to myself when I came to Australia in two thousand and three, I didn't. I didn't need any more friends. I didn't want any more. I've got. Mm. I had my friends that I'd known, like Glenn and Rusty and 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 Leon and that for all these years yeah, and I had the mentality he's like no, I don't need more friends so I I don't know whether it was whether I outwardly sort of ex, excused not excused um, extruded uh, the fuck off I don't want to be your friend sort of vibe yeah 
I don't know whether that was the case or when not. When you moved over here? Yeah. Like I came over here and I, yeah. and, I, and I just tried to assume it. I got back, I got into business pretty quickly. And, yeah. And, I'll, and, I'll, and the one thing I never did was, was um, have clients that were friends. It, it was always kept separate. Yeah, yeah fair call. Yeah. For obvious reasons. Yeah. It just makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, as I said, I was, cause I was thinking about this the other day. Um, because I, I mean, we've got we've got some really good friends in Australia, um, but I met Glenn and Amanda in Japan when we were snowboarding. And, yeah, and that had, um, you know, that was that. Although they lived in Australia, mm-hmm. it was at that point when I was coming over. But I've never, you know, apart from associates and that, I've never gone out and mm. actively gone because it gets fucking harder as you get older to make friends. Or to have uh, to have friends yeah. of the same caliber and value that you've had, like f- from yeah. from when you were younger. With, like, but I think being older too, I think you can cut through a lot of that bullshit. I mean, if you meet someone, you know, you can tell pretty much instantly straight away whether you're going to be, you know, good friends or not. And it's been quite, you know, especially with the barbecue community in there, it's actually quite scary how how quickly you can sort of just become like instant, you know, best friends with. With people you've just got a you know a, a bond over really so I mean I suppose you could you know assimilate that with other other interests as well there was fucking you know, I don't know car racing or whatever but yeah so yeah yeah it's weird yeah. but it, but it's weird having that um um you know you talk about the friends and that but it's it's quite hard to like if if you know shit comes up with you know relationship stuff or life stuff and all that you know who you can actually you know talk to and actually you know unload some stuff off onto as well um so that's probably one of the one of being the biggest things that i've sort of tried to get my head around in the last sort of you know year and a half or so is actually you know some a lot of shit sort of you know gone down you know business life wise and that and actually you know being able to get that off your off your chest and you know talking to people it's sort of quite you know you sort of feel embarrassed about you know talking about some of the stuff to people so uh opening opening yourself and, and being vulnerable to to people has been a has been one of the things that's probably changed me a lot in the last sort of you know year and a half and that so just opening up those those, those lines of communication and that as well too so so you're saying that you've, been, you've had you've had quite a bit to unpack over the last year and a half that un- unpacking as in you need to unpack and sort out exactly what was going on yeah for and sure. your direction yeah 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 so that this and is just and this was leading up to turning fit what, yeah I think so, so there, I think it was accumulation of a lot of things it was a lot of um you know, as a business owner and that, you know, everybody's, you know, as a business owner, father, you know, husband, whatever, everybody's just, you know. Pulling at you. Pulling at you yeah. and you've got no, and then there's no one, nowhere for you to turn to. Nobody's there for, for you to talk to and that, you know, everybody's just wanting, you know, chunks off you, you know, so to speak. And, you know, I mean, as a business owner, you've got to be a bloody, um, you know, social worker. You've got to be a, you know, marriage counsellor. Mentor, got to be, yeah. You've got to yeah, be yeah. everything to everyone. And it's just like, you know, when... You know, shit starts going down for you. It's just like you know, you know who do you know who do you sort of turn to and that. So that's been you know obviously you know your partner would be the first one that you sort of turn to. But you know sometimes it's sort of it's, it's not that easy. So opening opening myself and and being vulnerable to people has been um, your you know close friends and that has been yeah. a bit of a revelation really. So it's re- mm. revelation revelation revelation. revelation. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know my journey. I've I've yeah, I've, yeah. Had, I've had a lot of. And we, we've had the discussion where um, I've said to you, I don't have anybody to talk to. I don't like I'm. I can't go. I can't go pay two hundred dollars an hour and sit down with um, a psychologist and say this is what's happening with my business. I think I should make this financial decision. Uh, blah 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 blah. It, you just can't do that. And that's exactly the sticking point because when you actually explain things out what you're actually wanting to solve. It just sounds so fucking stupid, you know? It's just like, who the, who the, who the hell's going to, you know, it, who's who's going to understand all this? And it's, Well, I mean, a lot of people would weird. look at me and they would agree that I I'm, I just get shit done. And and I, yeah. and the one thing I do not do is I do not go back on a decision. I assess the situation, I weigh it, I weigh it all up, I make a decision and I go forward. I never look back. I never go. I, yeah, I you, think you, I should. I, yeah, but you've done all your due diligence on that decision. Oh, though. because it's, it's I'm not just a fly off the you know no, exactly. the pants sort of type stuff. No, I no, mean, exactly. you've done a shitload of work to to, to make that decision. So. Well, I've got I've got enough life skills to understand the process of making the decision, yeah. because as you say, in business, you're making decisions 
on the fly all the fucking time. Yeah, yeah, you know, sure. and you and you can't be humming and hurrying about certain things. Um, and for me, as I said, it is, there's never in my career have I have I regretted a decision I've made. It may have been a bad decision, but it's been made. There's yeah. nothing you can do about it. Yeah, I will if I make it. If I make it. If for some reason the decision was bad and the outcome was not favourable, I will learn from that and not make that same mistake again. Yeah, for sure. Again. That, that's the thing. Is not making that you know that that, that mistake twice. Going back to what we're talking about about being a male, being of our age, being a business owner, being a dad. It's it, it's hard to unpack stuff, and it's hard to find people because you don't want. I don't want to burden somebody. Mm. I don't want. I don't yeah, want that's somebody. The thing, eh? I don't look. Yeah. I don't want to. I don't want to say, "Hey, man, let's go to the pub and have a beer," and then go bleh and just fucking unload on somebody, and they're totally unprepared for it, and they just don't know what to do. They don't know how to react. You know? Yeah, I don't even my even my probably even my good friends. I wouldn't do. I wouldn't do that. I would, I would slip something into a conversation and see whether I get any traction back as to whether as to whether yeah. there's any acknowledgement. That, about that, that's it. that exposing that vulnerability. So if you're if you're vulnerable to somebody and then somebody's vulnerable back to you, you you just get that rapport going, and that's yeah. when that's the biggest thing that I found. Like if somebody's unloading on on me, it's just like then I can. Unload back on them, and then you can, you know, if yeah, but sometimes that you've been but through, sometimes then you can sort shit out. Sometimes that's not a healthy thing to do because the thing is that if you're, if I'm unloading on you, yeah, and then you unload back on me, it's like, well, you're not listening and you're not understanding what I'm trying to oh, say. I'm not saying at the same time, but you know, well, but yeah. if, if there's things that you've been through that I want, yeah, some, yeah, yeah. Ex- some advice on, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, sorry, yeah, misunderstood. Yeah. You say I'm not going to dump on you, and then you dump on no, me. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Fuck it. What are we doing here, man? Yeah. What are we doing? Not on a glass coffee table here. <laughs> <laughs> oh Jesus Christ, mate! It's it. Look, as I said, um, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't change anything. Uh, I, and a lot of people, they live in the past, they regret things. Yeah, I think it's unhealthy. Um, but it, with especially with guys like us at our age and and understanding going back to that mortality and that and that, that things are finite you know so we've got a certain amount of time to do a certain amount of things um, and in between that we've got to be happy mm. we've got to be good dads we've got to be good fathers we've got to be good partners we've got to be you know we've got to be all these things to all these people and and, and I'm not taking anything away from from females mm. in, in a similar situation for sure but we're two guys talking about guy shit we're yeah, not yeah, talking yeah. about girl shit yeah, with the girl yeah. shit we talked about last podcast yeah you know we talked about dry vaginas and stuff like that and you know I hate it when do I you want dry vagina do you want to get into that do you want to talk about dry vagina no yeah I'm, I'm easy <laughs> <laughs> you know you have nowhere to go nowhere to go well, I mean, there's a yeah HRT. You know about you know what HRT is, don't you? I know a little bit about it. I mean, it's probably not the right place to say it, but um, yeah. You understand it? I do, I do, I do. Yep, yep. And I know it's uh, life changing for for a lot of women, and it's also been oversubscribed. In yeah, NZ you that were I saying. Know. Yeah, you were saying that. that so I mean, obviously it's a bit, bit, bit trendy, you know, these days. So there's a lot of younger women. And NZ, and um, geez, I hope I'm not speaking out of turn here, but um, this is from what I've heard from a first first hand experience. There's a lot of younger women that um, obviously haven't had their hormone hormones level drop off that are getting prescribed HRT uh, products. For, what, for why though? I think is just it general for mood? mood. Yeah, mood sort of. Are they, um, are they trying to do that to replace like an SSIR? Like I've, a, I've got no idea. No? I don't even know what that means. But um, yeah, there's a lot of. A lot of it's um, just happy over, drugs. Over, happy drugs. Yeah, wow. Over prescribing it something that they don't need, it just doesn't make any sense. Yeah, basically, because I think it's free in NZ at the moment, so I'm not quite sure whether the doctors are getting kickbacks or not. But um, yeah, a lot of lot of young women getting prescribed it when they don't need it. So, I mean, obviously, you can measure for for hormone. Well, exactly, and as off. as we talked about with the the previous podcast, is I mean, HRT happens in 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 older women. It can start as early as early. Like your late thirty, late thirties, yeah. 
but it generally happens in your, in your yeah. late forties and your fifties. But usually you can measure for it though, and then the doctor can you know go. Oh well, yeah, this. exactly. I mean, and the, and you're gonna if you're perimenopause, you're gonna have a few, you're gonna yeah. have a few, um, you know, um, symptoms like you know, dryness. Um, <laughs> That you know, that, yeah. You know, um, yeah, hot flushes and stuff like that. Yeah. Then anyway, yeah. the guys listening to this podcast don't want to fucking listen to that. Or maybe they should because as as we, oh, you've got to look after the woman in your life, don't you? I mean, as you know. we as we made it pretty plain and clear, is there's got to be communications in a relationship. Yes. And if and if yes. and if your partner is experiencing something, they don't understand what's going on, and it's to do with a simple hormone yes. imbalance. It it's it's easily fixed. Yeah. You know? Don't don't just shut the door and, and fucking ignore it. Yes. You know, yeah. don't not talk about it. Yeah. You know, it's the same with it's the same with guys. It's the same thing with guys. Guys, as we get older, our testosterone levels drop mm-hmm. and you know, fucking shit happens. You get fat, you get mm-hmm. fucking angry. Communication, communication, communication. I, I mean, fucking fifty years old, you know, you'd sort of think that you'd know all this shit, but I still fuck things up, you know. Well, I think it's, it's just. Weird. You're still, I think you're it's always just, learning, always learning. You know, you can never communicate enough. You know, especially with your with your partner, and that it's always just talking. Well, you, you know, say, some shit's awkward to talk about. You just gotta gotta get it out there. I just gotta fucking hit the nail you on the head. Just gotta say it. I, I, I don't I don't hesitate any. I just, I just fucking call a spade a spade. Bring it up. What's going I'm on? I'm getting better. Last last What's year and a half, I'm, I'm starting to get better. You know. Yeah. Just, Still, pu- not perfect. Still, well, nobody's. Up. That's the thing. Nobody's. But, you know, I think as, as you said, you know, it's just not. You know, just not making the same mistake twice. So yeah, you know, that's yeah. That's all I want to do. Not, it's, not make the same mistake twice. It's, and when you and when you've been with your partner that long, you understand the nuances of each other. Um, and, and but if you're not recognising them and you're not addressing stuff as it happens, yeah, you're just ignoring it and it's just compounding yes. and that'll turn into something yep. else. Yeah. Yeah. And then you got a completely fucking different problem. Yes, that started from nothing. Yeah, you know, and um, you know, as we said, I mean, there's a lot of guys our age whose partners are are, are, are going through yeah. menopause, and they're not getting their needs met. Yeah, in one way or another, and they're fucking off and they're mm. trying to get it elsewhere. You know, and it's just it's just a a, a male instinct to to be loved and wanted. Mm-hmm. You know, it is that simple. You know, so yeah, man. There's a lot of there's a man. There's a lot of there's a lot of people out there. A lot of a lot of partners out there. A lot of relationships that are probably just on fucking cruise control and yeah. are just going through the motions, not addressing stuff. Stuff's getting ignored. You know, and and it's unhealthy. Mm. And then and then if you're on unhe- if you're unhealthy on top of that. It just compounds. Yeah, for you know? sure. We all know. We all know what exercise does. Regular exercise increases endorphins. It fucking makes you feel great. You know, it does definitely and does. You yeah. wanna, and you want to do other shit. Yeah. You know, that's one of the things I've done done this year too. I booked myself or entered a. Um, I wanted to do fifty k for fifty, so I wanted to run fifty k. It's a fucking 50. long way. Well, I ended it, it, up like, in one hit. You're going to do fifty k in one yeah, hit. Yeah, or? so so I entered a um, off road marathon in Rotorua in November. I think it's the eighth. 8th, 9th of November. So it's 42k, which is an off road ma- marathon. It's got, I don't know, 2,000 metres of so elevation you're gonna run, hills or whatever. You're going to run back back in from the motel? Well, yeah, I'll have to, to make so the 50. So I'll, have to, <laughs> I'll have to run like 4k there and then yeah. fucking 4k back. So. <laughs> I don't know. I would wanna, I'd want to do the 8k straight up. Like you'd yeah. finish the race and it's like, oh, Fuck! I've got to do but another. But that, that, that's uphill and downhill. So if you put that in a flat line, that's probably you know I don't know, be more than a way more than a marathon. It's probably like sixty k in a straight line. Well, if you why don't, why don't you just do a marathon and in, in a bit? Well, two. I don't How like running on flat. I love running on trails. You know, uphills and in the forest and that get the energy off the trees. Oh, okay, fair enough. Peace, love, and understanding. <laughs> <laughs> this podcast is brought to you in part by Buckfast. What is Buckfast? You ask. Well, let me tell you, it's better known as Bucky, and it's an internationally enjoyed, unique-tasting tonic wine. It's equally rich in heritage as it is in taste. It packs a punch from 15% alcohol and about the same amount of caffeine as a well-known drink that gives you wings. Buckfast's enjoyment is only rivaled by its versatility from the cooking pot to the wine or cocktail glass. Drink it straight, 
mix it in a Negroni, or use it as a marinade. Available Australia-wide and distributed by Beeblebrox Beverages. Visit beeblebrox.com.au to find your closest stockist and buckfast.com for cocktail and recipe ideas. Cool. So you mentioned before about TRT. Yes. So I'm, I'm assuming, I don't know much about this at all, I've heard a lot about it, so I'm guessing it's testosterone replacement therapy? Correct Correctamondo. Cool. Correct you to, so you're obviously yes. I'm taking... on. I'm on TRT. So I've, I've been on TRT for a year now. So how did you know that you needed it? What well, the... so so the difference between me and say somebody that wants to maybe increase the size of their physique, mine was completely related to my mental state. Yeah. So. Like you, when I got to 50, yeah. sort of had a lot of shit and revelations. But it, the, the catalyst was uh, I got three COVID jabs. Three? Yeah. And, and, I'll, and I'll tell you the reason why I got three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got three because I wanted to travel because I didn't oh, want to yeah, be yeah, restricted. Yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. But after the first jab... I had, so I had AstraZeneca. Yeah. After my first jab, I had a panic attack. Yeah. And I thought I was fucking dying. I honestly yeah. thought I was dead. Um, that was on the car driving, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was fucking terrifying. Yeah. yeah. So after that, after that, there was, there was, so I'm on, um, I'm on, uh, uh, uh it's called an antipsychotic, but yeah. it, it's for bipolar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah, sounds yeah, worse yeah, than yeah, what yeah, it is. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you know, so SSIR, so it's it increases yeah. your serotonin. Oh uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I've been on that for ten years. Yeah, and a lot of a lot of people with um, mental health problems, um, they have a lot of trouble um, finding. Uh, a combination of drugs that work for them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it can be a fucking minefield. Yeah. And a lot of times what will happen is that a doctor will prescribe something yeah. to somebody and if it sticks, well, then they go, oh, you're bipolar. So oh, yeah, right, yeah. you could be, you could just be yeah. depressed or whatever, whatever they want to label it as. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah like yeah, certain yeah. certain drugs will do, will, will give you a certain sort of diagnosis. Yeah, yeah. So, um, it just happened that the drug that I started on, yeah. Seroquel, yeah. was what I've been on for the last ten years. It works. Okay. It yeah. works fucking. It works brilliantly. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like keeping keeping like a base level. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know? right. And gotcha. and as I've said before, that like I can go out and party and I'll get highs and lows. Yeah. And I'll I'll pay I'll pay for it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. 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 You yeah. Know? yeah. What goes up must come down. Yeah. Um, and the idea was with your medication is to keep an even an even keel. Right. So yep. that you've got this baseline to work on. And of course, as I said, um uh it uh, um diet and exercise is all part of that yes yep. base that base level. Yeah. So what hap- what happened after that panic attack was there was uh There was a the realization you needed to do something to. No, it was a it was a a, a sense of doom. Yeah. That I couldn't I couldn't fucking shake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And. And it was it, it wasn't getting better, yeah. um, so I uh, I did some research on TRT. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So did you, you sort of heard about it? I mean, I've sort of heard about it from a, another couple of podcasts, and it's all been sort of you know relatively positive. You know, sort of the older you, the older you sort of get, 
the testosterone sort of obviously drops off and I suppose it's a lot with um with with with, with, with women with the HRT sort of replacement stuff. Yeah, so yeah, well, I imagine look, it's a similar sort of scenario in, in guys really. It just seems to be like a forgotten thing in guys. You sort of need to start replacing things that are starting to fall off. Well, I mean it's it's technically classified as a steroid and, and of course a yep. lot of bodybuilders use it because it's a naturally occurring hormone in in, yeah. your, in your body. So that's why you're looking so fucking jacked. <laughs> Is he taking it too? Because you're looking pretty fucking oh, jacked too, man. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Look, as I said, that that's not why it's, that's not why I'm taking it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a this is a a great byproduct because yeah. the good thing about it is obviously, and so, um, you know, to if you're if you're um, low on TRT, yeah. If you're over fifty and you're putting on weight and you're lethargic and and, yeah. and you are genuinely low on testosterone, yeah, you can go to your doctor, yeah, and they'll do some tests and then you can get okay, you can cool. get on TRT through through the uh, medical system through medical system, yeah, right, yeah. So that that's one way to do it. Yeah. So that's a doctor's visit every what every month. No, it's a it's a weekly. It's jab. a weekly thing. Okay. It's, and it's, so a, it's jab. a jab. It's a weekly. Jab. So it's a, an injection. Yep. In your ass. In your ass. Okay, radio. In your leg. So the needle was about this fucking long. We well, haven't got much of a fucking ass. So, <laughs> so where I did put, they it, put it. I put it in my thigh. So, so oh, okay, I go radio. from one thigh to the other. Yeah. But um, it's not even a handful anymore. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's uh, um, it's it's hard because I I sort of did it. Um, I, I I did it on the down low on basically the 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 black market for a year myself to see what the results were, see what sort of effect it had so, on us. So on so, me, sorry. Sorry, so you went to a doctor, you got the test and he said no. you were, you didn't go to a doctor. No, that's what I'm saying. Like, right, like, okay, so I right, so I it. don't cool. I gotcha. I don't I wouldn't qualify as having low testosterone. So the thing right. is that Okay, I'm with you now. Yeah, yeah. Like gotcha. for a fifty year old male, yeah. My testosterone levels are yep. normal. Right. Yep. They're yep. normal yep. for a 50 year old. Okay. They're not classed as low. Yeah. So by adding TRT to my existing yep. medication, was hopefully going to get me to the point where I was going to level back out again and not want to fucking. Yeah. So, so how, did, how did you find it then? How did you find somebody to. Do you administer it or does it. Person that you found administer it. So I I get it through a supplier. Yeah, and you do it the yourself. same way. Yeah, the same way. So you get like a syringe. They give you like a pack well, of so, five so, syringes or something. So or get this. So get this. I've got to I've got to buy TRT on the black market. Yeah. Underhand cash. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah like yeah, if yeah, like yeah. I'm buying drugs. Yeah. Technically, yeah. I that I am. I am buying drugs from yeah. a drug dealer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But to administer it. I can go to an injection um, fucking place. There's one in Frankston down the road. Thanks, Dan. <laughs> I can go to I can go there yeah. and walk in and go. Yeah. Can you? And they call it a gym kit. So, oh, fuck, really? A gym kit. They will give yeah. you a hundred syringes, a hundred yeah. needles. Yeah. Yeah. Swabs yeah. and a little kit. To put your needles in Radio. for safe disposal, okay. they will give that to you. Fuck. Just walking in off That's the off the off. I felt I felt fucking like a like a drug fucking oak. junkie, yeah, like yeah, a junkie. Yeah, yeah. And it was funny because the day I went in there, yeah, there was a couple of crackheads fucking yeah. just walking out the door, acting like a couple of buffoons. Yeah, 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 yeah. And they were going in to get their to get their needles. Yeah. You know? Well, I mean, I've seen all the um, the methadone clinics along Chapel Street. It's like you've got a You've got like a vape store, <laughs> a bloody Japanese restaurant, a bottle store, and you've got the fucking methadone clinic. It's like every and a tattoo studio and a piercings and shit. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, so weird. yeah, it's so. so I tell you what, do you need it done on um, Saturday? Because I tell you what, when we were, when we were injecting our pork, a brisket up. <laughs> just as long those as your are, thigh look looks like, look like a bit of brisket or a bit of pork, I'll those, fucking, I'll mate, juice those you up. needles are fucking even bigger. Even yeah. do yours are terrible. So yeah, so so <laughs> as I said, I, I I for a year I I yeah. I, I I did my own research. Yeah, and I actually I actually felt guilty because so I go to my doctor every 
month, every sorry, every three months, every quarter yep. to get my buds checked. So yes, he does everything. Like four times a year. Yeah, yeah. He does everything, and and I started saying to him, "Can you just check my testosterone?" Yeah, which is a no, which is a normal inquiry. You know, it's it's not yep. out of out of you know, it's not. Wouldn't he sort of think to himself that you know how better check this? Well, he knows my like, medical history as oh, okay, as, right, as yep, yep, yep. having bipolar. Okay. So it, it for him it would be well, yeah, um, that makes sense. If you've yep. got low testosterone, it just adds to that. Um, the puzzle. That, that, yeah. You know, and I actually I only just rec- I've only just recently, and probably the last the last time I went, actually told him what I was doing. Yeah. And he said, "If it's working for you, yeah, I'm all for it." So how 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 soon did you feel the effects? So you obviously got the got the juice off seven the dude. Days. Seven days, seriously. Seven so days. So what did you what did you notice straight away? What were the immediate effects that you felt? Uh happier. Yeah. Really? Uh, just feeling just generally better, stronger in the gym, like within seven days. Really? And and noticeable. And they say they say to um the the Obviously, the people that I, would, I, I talk about it, yeah, they say to take it easy because a lot of people rip muscles off off bones oh, because fuck. they go too oh, yeah, fucking yeah, yeah, hard yeah, yeah, thinking yeah, yeah, that yeah. they're yeah, yeah. that they're Hercules. So that Shit. so that immediate that immediate response. So so you've got elevated mood, yeah. Um, you've got extra strength, yeah. Um, Better sex drive. Yeah. Not that that was ever a problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. you got you got. No, you hard, don't have to tell me about that. You got fucking hard ons. Like you're a fucking fifteen year old. Yeah. Um. Yeah, and and it just just general just positive. Just general well, that, well so awesome. when you when you think about it, so so as I said, there's a lot of people taking testosterone for aesthetics. You know, for for right. physique. So so if somebody that never had the the bipolar issue, and they were like hitting fifty. That testosterone wouldn't do much for them. Do you think? Well, hold you on. You think a it's more of a chemically no, 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 balancing no. things out. You know who Jeff Bezos is, don't you? Yeah, I've, I've I've heard the name before. Have a look at this. Man, have you got that photo of Jeff? Yeah. But th- is this at fifty though? Because I've seen the pics before. Is that at fifty? How old? How old's Bezos? He's he's in his fifties. So anybody, mm-hmm. yeah, anybody in that age bracket, yeah, that is jacked, yes. Is either a genetic god, or yeah. they're on the, or they're on the juice. Okay, right there. Yeah, but that one on the right, that's when he was like fucking seventeen or something, nineteen. I mean, that was. That's, when did he start look, up that's probably. Yeah, it was. Was it. he nineteen or something in his yeah. garage or whatever? So I mean, that that's nineteen, and that's it. I think there's some. I think there's some other ones, but I mean, I, yeah, I, 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 I understand I've, your point. I'm just. I think we've t- well, I've heard. I've heard Joe Rogan talking about it, and, and yeah, yeah, other yeah, yeah, podcasters, yeah, 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 you know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that's yeah. interesting. But when you th- but when look at the veins in his arms there, I mean, you know, yeah, there's there's definitely bigger forearms, bigger biceps, bigger shoulders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when you think about it, you get to fifty. Yeah. You're feeling fucking old. You're feeling tired. You may be carrying a little bit more weight than what you you you're comfortable with. Why why wouldn't you? Take something like TRT, and I'm not advocating. It. It's my yeah, situation. I, I get your point. But my you're, 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 is a fit, you're a fit, skinny dude anyway. So if you're in my position at at well, 49, 48 and a half or whatever, fucking overweight, fucking not eating the best, drinking a t- ton of piss. So if uh, if you were hitting 50, if I was hitting fifty now, if I was in the same position a year and a half ago, I'd probably cut out the piss a little bit, maybe get onto that low carb shit. Eat better, you know. Get on. I mean, the, the the keto the keto diet sort of kick start kick started things off for me, and just get those get those results. Get a bit of exercise. Get a fucking dog. You know, go for a walk. Whatever you got to do. But once you start getting those results, it just starts snowballing. You're just like fuck. Oh, this is okay. And then and you find you know shit just start getting easier rather than just being a you know a, an overweight bigger guy instead of just going straight for the easy option. You know, cut all the shit out first, and then maybe look at the. the you saying the easy stuff. option isn't TRT? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If, if, if a, you, 
if, if you were like a, a little bit overweight and you know eating shit, you know, oh, look, at, cut, I, cut all the shit out first. I totally and, agree. And then look at the TRT. I stuff. totally agree. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not yeah, advocating yeah. TRT. Oh no, no, no. At but, all. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's a different. It's, it's horses for courses. You know. I'm just. You know. I'm just saying. Yeah. But that's um that's pretty fucking amazing that that's done that for you and you know that's fucking cool. Well, the thing is that. If it, it's just a shame that it's available. It's only available on the black market, you know. Well, you can. It's you a shame can you go, can't go to a doctor and. Well, so the third, the third place you can go, there are clinics. Yeah. That you can just go pay for it, and so you're paying for. So the, did you so want? You're paying how, for the how much service. does it cost? Do you, do you mind me asking? Uh, so this is black market prices. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, they come in the little vials. See, we've yeah. seen them like. Yeah. So it's a little vial with a little foamy thing, and you put the syringe into the it, and yeah, just yeah. like the. Yep. So okay. uh, a buck fifty, so one hundred and fifty bucks is about um, four, four or five weeks supply. So it's about oh, that's not bad. Two hundred milligrams. That's not bad. Yeah, that's probably bloody prescription prices at the end of the day. Oh, look, so. it's not it's not expensive. Oh, okay, ready. Right well, I was thinking. It so was. the thing is, and it's a, so once again, with regards to money, I I don't relate the price of something uh, in. It doesn't enter into the equation of me being happy. Oh, for sure, yeah, you can't. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah, for it's sure. it's a it's irrelevant. You know, so it is it, it is what it is. I mean, if it was five hundred dollars, it still wouldn't make any difference. If, if it if I had trialed it and got the results, yeah, that I that I wanted, it wouldn't it wouldn't have made any difference. Yeah, yeah. you know. But as I said, it's it's hard. Um, it's hard for somebody like for me. As I said, I had to go back to a black market. Um, or go to a clinic yeah. and pay for this to happen. Like yeah. the worst, like the shittiest thing about the whole fucking scenario, is you got to stick a big fucking needle in your ass or your leg yeah. every week. It's it sucks, and I actually get anxious about doing it every fucking week. I fucking hate it. Oh, you called me a fucking pussy get, before about bloody oh, needles well, and shit. It's yeah. I mean, and I say to myself, I say to myself, don't be a fucking pussy, just yeah, jab yeah. it in. And it won't but you've got it. You, you've got the you've got the results though. So you know you're saying it's got to be it's got to get a lot easier because you know what the the, the end result's going to be. So I've got to fucking jab this needle in my fucking thigh. It's a means to an end. And I'm going to be fucking happy. So it's like yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And as far it's as a shame you can't go to a nurse at your doctor's to, to do that and it'd be like you know. Well, that, I mean, it's something that you got to do out of your out of your day or out of your week once a week. Yeah. So it's like having yeah. to go to. Like, well, it's like going to the gym or going to, you know. Yeah, it's probably know. it's probably a little bit more. Once once it's routine, it's just like you know. But um, yeah. And as far as longevity, I mean, a lot of so TRT. There's a lot of good and bad about TRT. Yeah. And if you're young, so what are the bad things about TRT? So if you're young, yeah, it's not going to work. And no, it's it's definitely going to work. Oh really? So you look at Mav. He's what, 14, 15, he's got a lot of natural TRT Fuck. running through his, How old are you, mate? through his system. 14. Are you only 14? Yeah. Fuck. Through his system. So you get you get teenagers at 16 or 18 that still haven't finished developing and yeah. they have all this testosterone. And then they whack more on top of it with TRT or whatever else they're yeah. doing. And it can cause bitch titties. You've got bad oh, acne. Yeah. You've got oh yeah, so yeah, you've like got steroid, infer- as you said you've before. Got, it is. A, it's a it, yeah. it's a steroid, and you've got because, fertility. Because you just get the excess. It's just the excess testosterone building up because you're not using it. Well, your body your body's absorbing it. So 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 your body produces it and it absorbs it and and it's muscle growth and yeah. and everything that the body uses. But it'd be like eating a bunch if, of sugar, right? Eh? If your body's not using it, it's just going to turn it to fat. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. No, but I'm just saying, I'm just using that as a comparison. Like, it's like eating a, a shit ton of sugar and if your body doesn't use it, it's just going to turn it to fat. And it's, it's the same sort of scenario with testosterone. T- no. No. No, 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 no. So, um, as I said, with the, with the youth, they, yeah. they, they dose too much. Yeah. And then they have these issues with getting bitch titties and they have bad acne and it yeah. can affect their fertility. Um, it affects prostate, you know. So yeah. as, as for me in my 50s, I'm probably going to um, probably gonna stay on it until I die. Yeah. And there's something else, and there's something changes. Now, there yeah. are a couple of risks associated with that, with prostate, which – which I get checked every three months anyway. So yep. I'm, I'm checking what's going on. But there's not a lot of downside 
for older people like me, like your testy string. That's yeah. They could that that's a downside. I could care fucking less. Yeah, yeah, how yeah. How big yeah, my sure. fucking balls are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? for sure. It's not like I'm out there swinging them around. Fucking. They just get in the fucking way. Anyway. No, dude, they're a pain in the, <laughs> a pain in the ass. <laughs> they stick to the inside of your leg. But so there's so there are so there are there are yeah. a few downsides to it. You know. Um, but for me personally, the upside is it is so there's risk and reward with yeah. anything in life. Yeah, you know, it's a calculated decision that I've made, um, and it's backed by science. Yeah. So you know, it's as I said, I just it's it's hard not to feel like a dirty fucking druggo sometimes. Yeah, but I mean, you know, when you're doing backdoor deals and you're yeah, having to fuck. jab yourself, yeah, you know, yeah. um, but you're it, getting the results though. I mean. Oh, dude. Who gives a fuck? I, I mean, for me, results have been happy. It's not, It's not. as I said, it's not physical. The the, the, the physical attributes and the, and the... I fucking love training. I've always loved training hard. Yeah. And um, TRT, no TRT, I'm still going to train hard. Yeah. It's just I'm going to see results. Yeah. And when I... And, and so you think about it. You see results and you feel good. Yeah. It's that snowball effect, though. Exactly, and and just by that, that's that's worth it, fucking alone. Yeah, for sure. Just to look in the mirror and go, man, how good's that? You know, I yeah, feel yeah. I feel fucking I feel confident. You're a sexy not, motherfucker. Not that I've ever had a problem with confidence, you know. Yeah. But um, as I said, there are there are some great. It, there's a lot of upside to it, and as I said, there's no downside. If there was downside, and it outweighed the up, the up. Yeah. Well, it wouldn't happen. Yeah, but, you know, as I said. So, as I said, not advocating it to anybody, yep. but um, just look at it. It is a it, it is a problem with older men. Do with, your own DD and yeah, yeah. Talk to your fucking doctor. Well, this is it. I mean, I I started doing the old um, yearly wafts at about forty, and I went in and got on my PSA. You know, levels. You know, you get your baseline. So then the next year I went in and just to see if anything moved like that. So a PSA for our listeners, that's to so do with your prostate. So it's like a prostate sort of type stuff, but it's not necessarily a, um, a an indicator, but it's a sort of an indicator. So once the well, once, once PSA levels start going up, then you start, you know. But my you know, understanding was that the PSA in a in a blood test was um, was was the baseline instead of having a finger up your up your date. Yeah, 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 yeah which was always my you know. Worst fear and have you had it? I think with well, I've oh, got a fucking funny story about this. <laughs> <laughs> it was uh, obviously with COVID and all the bullshit and that, you know, the, obviously the waff sort of stopped for a few years and all that, and, and I was always meaning to go back. And, and a waff is a war and a fitness war for, and those, a fitness for, you, for those for those male, educated. You know. So so I go in because I mean I'm fucking terrible with needles, so it's just like I'm um, laid out. So I'll go and see the doctor do all the fucking checks, you know, the blood pressure and all the bullshit and all that. And um, and then when they take blood, it's just like fucking put me on a table, take as much fucking blood as you want, and test for fucking everything because we've got a bit of a heart heart thing in my family, so yeah. we've, we've sorted that out. I haven't got that, so that that's all good. So um, I've got this um, uh, Canadian female doctor. Nice. And she's uh, by choice, of course. Well, well actually. Yes, yeah, I, I think Wendy sorted this out, but yeah, she's not exactly um, she's not exactly unattractive. So nice. So um, ended up going in there for a waff one day, and um, sat down there and that. And we started talking about blood tests for the PSA and that, and um, she was just so fucking smooth. It was just like by the time I knew what was happening, she had a I was, <laughs> <laughs> and all I could think of was like, don't get a fucking hat on, don't get a fucking hat on. That's all I could think of. Hey, it was just like, oh fuck, but it was just you know, yeah. Did you say can you put a second finger in there so no, I, I so I get a second opinion? <laughs> <laughs> another another no. finger. No, I've no. never I've never had it. Oh really? I've never had it. Why not? Well, a because the doctors never said to me, "Hey, let's let's do it." But I get I get my blood test regularly in the in the in the PSA. Yeah, but but I mean, my my dad had um, prostate cancer. He got it, and it was just because his PSA. Level was was elevated, so here yeah, but that's what I'm saying. Get... So so if yeah. my if my PSA level comes back, yeah, but it happens so fucking test. quickly though. It's almost like if you if you do it every year, and then by the, the only way to do it properly is by fucking but finger up the bum. I'm every three months, remember. So 
Yeah, I know. So it's probably every, you know, if you want to do it every six months or something like that. But yeah. um, it, 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 once you get to a, obviously a certain age, it, it just seems to accelerate. So, and she was like, the only way you can actually do it fucking properly is just, you know, fucking put the finger up there and, you know, but aren't get there, it done and it's, dusted. It's, excuse me, ignorance. Are there other... Are there other symptoms or other signs that you've no, got on a large it's, it's prostate? A very, it's a very symptomless type um, of fucking disease, I suppose. I don't know. Yeah. It's uh, very simple. The only way to do it properly is just, you know, and just, yeah, just got to fucking get it done. I mean, you just, yeah, I don't know. It might be a bit embarrassing, but I mean, chicks have got to do, you know, fucking well, smears know. every, got, I don't exactly. know, year or two years. Where's the set? I, mean, I said, I've never, I mean, how, I've you know, never how been. How fucking invasive is that? I mean, all we got to do is have a finger up the ass every year, I mean. Fuck, it's not that hard, guys. Sounds like a party, doesn't it? Well, fuck, you know. I'll tell you what. Shout well, what, me a couple of option? Shout fucking... me a couple of beers and you can and you can check my prostate. How's that? Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Cool. Sweet. Yeah, I'll, pro- I'll do it anyway. Do but, prostate you know. parties. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well I think we've just got to fucking normalise this sort of stuff, eh? I mean, we've just got to talk about it and, you know, have a laugh or get a I don't know I don't know if you yeah, I was gonna say get a Get a nurse around to the workplace or something like that, but uh, that might. I be think. A bit. Look, I think that. As soon as I think of that, I think of the Blink One Hundred and Eighty Two fucking album cover. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the start. But um, I, oh yeah, I, I shouldn't joke about it. It's no, look, as you, as you say, thing. the stuff it's, like um, that should be normal, and that, yeah. and and that's been the one message so far with Lured. Yeah, is go to your fucking doctors. Go yeah, to your doctors yeah, on a yeah. regular basis. I think some people, some people that don't even fucking brush their teeth on a regular. Basis. This is yeah. like, yeah, exactly. come on, man. What's, what are you doing? What are you doing? I mean, shit. I mean, if you got, you know, family kids, you want to be around for them as long as possible, and they're gonna have kids. You're gonna be a, you're gonna be a grandparent. You're gonna be a grandfather. You're gonna be a grandmother yeah. one day. I mean, fuck. You've just gotta, just gotta be around as long as you can. I mean, you know, life's pretty fucking good. And if it's not, you've gotta do something about it. Fuck. You've gotta be happy. How I didn't mean to fucking. Uh, gotta be happy. I didn't mean to break up on you there. Earlier. Oh, fuck, it is what it is, you know. Uh, I know we're, we're going to talk about some stuff, you know, a bit later on that I know I'm going to, you know, that, that's touched my heart a fair bit, so. Well, no, it's, as I said, it's, um, it's, it's, it's still taboo for me to actually talk about, talk about it. Yeah. Because I've ignored it for a lot of fucking years, although I've known what's been going on. I've ignored the fact, or it's only recently that I've actually called it what it is, and said to people, without hesitation, of, it's not like an. That's the thing is like, I think people use mental excuses and mental health as as, as an excuse. I've never used it as, as an excuse, and by saying it, it's somehow, you somehow think that that's what you're doing, like my behaviour, oh, it's just because. I'm bipolar. It's never been that way, and I've and and it's. I don't know. As I said, it's 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 just a weird getting to fifty. All that shit happening. Um, it's like once again, it's like fuck it. I, I I think we're all on that. Um, I think we're all on that very fine line. Um, you know, there was times last year where I was, you know, I was I was feeling it too, and mm. if I hadn't, you know, sort of, you know. Talked about it and that, you know, God knows where it would have ended up. It's um, it's um, I mean, it's a tough subject. It's just we've just got to fucking normalise it. That's it's yeah. as simple as that. Yeah, but as I said, sometimes, and it, and it seems now that it's used as an excuse too fucking often. Yeah, I know what you mean. And that's yeah, what, yeah, yeah, for sure. And that's what frustrates me. You yeah. know, it's like, but the, you know, I can I can see, and have seen my my clear course the the clear course of my life and how it's played out. Yeah, I can see that. Now, yeah, oh, for in sure. its entirety, oh, and I understand every point and every action and every reaction. I, I can see that now. I mean, you know, when you when we first started talking about it, you know, a few years ago. I mean, all the when you were younger and all that, it, it all makes perfect sense now. Yeah, yeah, and it's just yeah, yeah just that, crazy. But it's yeah, it's um, fuck, it doesn't get any easy, man. Doesn't no, I know, but you know, if um, I mean, if there's one lesson to be learnt. You know, and somebody can take something from this and and help somebody or know somebody that's you know in a similar position and yeah and say hey fuck just can you just go and talk to somebody about this I mean yeah, yeah. if your story can help you know one person I mean fuck it's got to be worth it eh yeah 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 exactly fuck exactly yes. it's just hard telling 
Oh, yeah, I don't know, but fuck, you've just got to just got to do it, eh? And I think this is what I've sort of, you know, learnt in the last sort of year and a half. You know, you've just got to, you know, you've just got to tell your story and you've just got to be vulnerable and open up and you know, hope people understand. Yeah, and if they don't, well, fuck, they're not worth. No, no, it's not worth being part of your life. Yeah, yeah, indeed. You know, people. You know, I don't know, but it's like attracts like, or you know. The people that you want in your life will just, you know, either turn up there or be there, and I don't know. Mate, talking about Fuck drugs, this is deep. <laughs> talking about drugs. <laughs> it's okay. I was just about to shift. You want to talk about my t-shirt? I was just about to shift. The stakes are high. Um, no, I was talk- I was, we were talking about drugs, um, and this, st- and the story about, um, Melbourne Airport. Oh yes, remember that. I mean, you tell, I was in there personally, but um, it's a fucking great story, though, mate. I'm glad they don't have cameras in the in the toilets. So I was, I can't even remember where I was flying out of. It was or, Melbourne was Airport, fl- though. I was sorry, I was flying out of Melbourne. I can't out remember Melbourne, where so. I was going to. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. And I walk into the urinal. So it, people that know Melbourne Airport, there's um, yeah. a big McDonald's, and then there's yeah. a series of toilets next to that. Yeah, yeah. And I walk in to have a pee into the cubicle. And there's a fucking bobble of cocaine in there, like a. So what did it look like? So you know, so you you were pissing in the urinal. Oh, no, no, I was in the, I was in a cubicle. Okay, well you're of, a bit shy because I've got a small penis. Yeah. Um, so you know, the stereotypical drug. So like a balloon. Yeah. So a a bobble. I call it a bobble, like like I'm showing my hands, like I don't know, it's like a. Um, so like a I tennis ball, a squash ball? No, no, smaller than that. So it was no, a so, round so, ball. It was a round so, ball. No, it was it was it was oval pennant. It was pennant shape, oval. So the bobble. So it had looked as though it had been in an anus. It it. So if you watch it TV, like a butt plug. if you yeah, exactly without the without the stop a bit. <laughs> the stones, <laughs> exactly, and it was and it was in a and, and it was a red. It looked like a red condom. Right. Okay. And I walk in to go for a pee, and it's sitting in there. So it's floating, floating, floating smiling in the at water. Me. Did it have shit on it? Clean, clean, clean as a whistle. Oh. So yeah, what yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah. what I'm, what I'm immediately thinking is, fucking, who saw me come in here? Yeah. And do they have cameras in there? Yeah, and you yeah, sort of yeah. go, well, it's a toilet. They, yes. they don't have cameras in there. Yeah. But I, in 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 my haste to get out of there, I did stop and take a photo. <laughs> I've got a great, I've, I've got, seen got a great Polaroid. I've got a great Polaroid of it. I reckon really? there was probably I don't know. What are you doing carrying a fucking Kodak ten three fifty X on you? I have my old Instamatic motherfucker. Yeah. Um, so do you reckon like the, um, the 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 dude that went in there must have had it in the system? Well, and I shattered reckon, out and had a bit of oxygen in it, so it washed all the shit off it. Maybe and it's floated like he. Went to flush it down and it couldn't go down because it was like yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, like that floaty that you did at Pufflet Road that time. <laughs> <laughs> you tried to poke it down with a fucking stick. Dirty motherfucker. I'm gonna suggest. I'm, I'm gonna suggest that that's the case. That I, I presume it's come out. I doubt it would have come out. The, Why would it be clean? But it, it's got. It's been through a, a couple of. It's been through the wash cycle a, a couple, couple of, of times. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> and, and maybe the dude's just got a nice clean colon. I don't know. But maybe that's a prerequisite for drug dealers is they need to have a colonoscopy before they do, before they put. But yeah, it, I took a cat. I took a photo of it and I walked out and just looked over my shoulder, and fucking and never, Ran like and never went back. But interesting. Wow. Talk about toilets. But then like, again, what would you have done with it anyway if you? That's the only thing that's well, pissed me going off cocaine on. is just know it's been up some dude's arsehole before you stick it up your nose. Oh, look. That puts me off. Well, the issue these days is fucking fentanyl, but that's a, yeah, that's well, a whole yes, different I fucking... Yeah, yeah, fuck Did I tell you about the disabled fucking toilet story? Have you heard that one? No. Jesus. Just in the Aaron Smith Memorial Toilets down <laughs> no. in Deleon Airport. Shout out to Aaron Smith <laughs> in Japan. He'll be listening, of course. Of course, He'll yeah. be tuning in. Um, no, it was a disabled toilet. Um, at Melbourne Airport once again. Once again, by the once again. I think it by no, it was by those pubs. So there's a there's a couple of bars and bit in there and a circular thing, and and it was early morning flight. Was this on the way in or the way out? Way out. Yeah. So oh, early. Yeah, yeah, no, so yeah. early. Yeah, 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 early yeah. morning. I hadn't had my morning poo. Yeah. Obviously rushed to get out the door. Yeah. Because my wife has to get to the airport ten hours before our flight. Yeah. Yeah. And it was fucking busy. It was busy that time of the morning. Went in, all the all the stalls are taken, but the 
uh, uni- the, the disabled toilet was free. Door was open. Fucking beautiful. Take action. Nip on in there. No. She was sitting having a, having a Prosecco, as she does that time in the morning. And so I'm doing my business, and... I don't, I don't, do you do? I don't know. I don't know if this is a, a common thing because I'm trying to. I taught my son this. You, you know what courtesy flushing is, don't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, courtesy yeah, flush yeah, so you don't stink yeah. You, yeah. you and the joints up. Yes. So I'm halfway through my business. It's yeah. getting a bit stinky. I'm thinking I'll fucking do a courtesy flush. Oh, Jesus. So on the wall next to me is this button flush. It fucking flushes. And the door <laughs> automatically oh, opens. Fuck, seriously. <laughs> so it automatically opens. Oh. So I'm sitting there on the on the dunny, and this guy is with his child is passing and the door, wheelchair. passing the door as as I'm sitting there trying to press this fucking button, trying like to get the door Like an actual disabled person is trying to use the disabled toilet. And he's and he's look, man. It's not like I was parking my car there and going off shopping for the day. I was just having a poo. <laughs> you know? But this, I remember this father. Covering his his kids' <laughs> eyes as he walked as we walk as he walked past me in the toilet, and I'm banging on this fucking door <laughs> trying to close it again, and it was one of those doors. It was like a Doctor Spock fucking. Yeah. Quack. yeah, 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 yeah. Jesus Christ, that was exciting. First thing in the yeah. morning reminds me of that Jerry Seinfeld joke. Um, I saw him in Auckland a few years ago, and there's always that. Um, you know, you got the toilet if you're sitting there having a poo, and there's always that little gap in the in the toilet. <laughs> And Jerry Seinfeld made this joke about, you know, just seeing an eye, seeing an eye in that little gap. <laughs> <laughs> Probably had to be there. But yeah. I, I saw him, I saw um, Jerry in Las Vegas. He was That's fucking him. funny. Yeah, we're seeing him in June when he's coming to... Coming oh, really? To in June, yeah, yeah. He's doing a tour, is he coming to Australia? Uh, I'm not too sure. I doubt he's, I doubt sure. he's just coming he's to NZ. He was Arena last time, but... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. He's, he's funny, fucker. He is, he yeah, just makes the um, ordinary seem so fucking funny. Well, that's where that's where the comedy comes from. Just that, Imagine that a mundane a gap in a toilet door. Yeah, yeah, crazy. What else we got? Well, man, I was going to talk to. Would, we were going to talk about because um, I saw this this movie with Julia Roberts in it just recently on Netflix. Yeah, I saw that too. It was uh, so it was leave the world behind. Yes, about basically a cyber attack which took oh, out. I thought it was that fucking. The um, that ship running aground. No, but so what? Well, the the cyber was a Costa Concordia documentary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know what you Come mean. Come on, mate. They were, it was a, it was basically a cyber attack. Yeah, taking out um, the the, the power. Yeah. and then taking out the internet and the data. And and yeah. that and that, I had a flashback a year ago. Yes. To the cyclone in Napier that we had yeah, yeah, in yeah, Hawke's yeah, Bay yeah. in New Zealand. And it just made me think how vulnerable we all are mm. because we we sat there the, the morning after the cyclone thinking everything was fucking tickety-boo mm. and then data dropped out, cell phone mm. signal dropped out, power well, dropped out. We knew mum and dad's place had been flooded in Havelock, so I was talking to dad at 7 o'clock on the Tuesday morning and he said there's water through the, the house um, and all of a sudden the phone went dead and it was like, yeah, it was probably about five, five, six, seven days later when I was talking to him. So yeah, it's pretty, pretty fucking, yeah, freaky shit. But, there was um, just that, 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 that sheer, um, feeling of desperation. And helplessness. You couldn't like, fucking do anything. No one well, no, was exactly. here to fucking help you or tell you what to do. The radio was fucking useless. They tell you to listen to the radio for civil defence updates. What's civil defence here? What's the equivalent here? Uh, SES. Yes, okay, yes, yes. Yeah, so those sorts of updates and that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck, there's none of that sort of shit. You fucking, you're just there by yourself. Well, so it's, no one gives a fuck. So the crutch of that that movie was basically a cyber attack, making everybody think that, um, well, making everybody feel helpless in that, and then yeah, and then all living governments in this, gov- all living in this bloody five million dollar house with a pool and yeah, you know. But you've got, I mean, you got to feel for them. I mean, nobody had internet. It, it was good at the end when the the young girl got to see her playing the videos and that. She, yeah. Well, she got to so see. So they obviously her. had their own power supply and all that. So we had no power supply. I think we were cut off for like five, five, six, seven days. It was only I think they got in the bunk. Don't quote me. Don't, it's, I probably need to rewatch it. But yes, that that helplessness of no power, mm. no internet, no data, 
and not knowing when it's coming back on and knowing the extent of the devastation with the flooding. Yes. Um, and, I mean, me and Mav, it took us three days to get out of, yep. four days to get out of Napier. Yeah. And and I could have kissed the fucking the yeah. the, the, the woman behind yeah. the counter when we the, finally got on a flight. The airport was um, the only thing that seemed to be open. I mean, obviously with no power and that, you couldn't go get any gas for your car. You couldn't go to the supermarket and buy anything. Well, see, that was my so point. So Napier, Napier, the, the the bridges around Napier. So Napier was essentially an island. The bridges were most of the bridges were washed out. Mm. We couldn't get to Hastings. We couldn't get to the other part of the you know. The uh, well, the mainland basically. So we we couldn't go and buy anything. We couldn't go and do anything. We just literally had what we had, and that was it. Well, we were talking about it over dinner last night about a cashless society, yeah. which is basically w what looks like we're headed towards. And in in Napier, if you didn't have cash, you couldn't fucking buy food or fuel. Well, I mean, what 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 what's good cash when you're wanting to buy a loaf of bread that nobody can make, nobody can get any goods into the shops, you can't you can't literally go and buy anything. You can't, well, that's worst case scenario. You've got nothing yeah, to uh, spend your cash on. If that, that, I mean, all we had was our neighbourhood, you know, support network really, and we were just sharing what we had. And well, as you say, and if you think about in a, an apocalyptic type scenario, which which is very real and could happen in this day and age. Um, you've got you've got to bound together with mm. with your tribe, you yeah. know, and pull your resources. And that was my question about the value of cash. Like if if there's no if there's no cash, if it's a cashless society, what becomes of value? Is it is it fuel? Is it the food that you're growing in your backyard? Mm. Is it ammun ammun it's ammun you can swap. ammunition? Is mm. it guns? Is it is it you know? Yeah. Like with Mad Max, it's all about petrol and gas you know is that where we're headed is that is that where the world's fucking headed to this scenario where if you don't have diesel for your generator you, you're fucked mm. but then again what what are you running your generator for are you running it for your fridge to put your fucking meat in exactly oh, it's especially in a city like melbourne where you've got like you know five six million people and well, you can see so. you can see how you can create chaos, don't you? Oh, for sure. You know? It's so easy to do. You know, you've you just got to take a. Well, you look at. You've just got to take a fucking power. You look at what a pandemic did. You know the fear yeah. of a pandemic. Yeah, that you fear. can still go to the supermarket. You know, people will still love to make stuff and. Yeah, oh, exactly, exactly. But as you say, if you, you take, take that out of the you equation, take that out of the fuck. Equation, fuck, people fucking people can't eat. They can't. I mean the the. The first thing that's going to go is obviously the power and the and the, and the internet, you know, and th that's just going to fucking cripple people from the fucking knees down, you know. They're just going to be lost. Oh, They're going to be walking around like fucking zombies, you know. Yeah. What am I going to do now? You know, I don't have a phone to put in my face and and digest fucking. So there's only so many shit. cans of fucking baked beans you can fucking have in your. Well, there's only can you? only so many cans of VB you can ingest before you get fucking sick of that too. Cans in a can opener. Fuck. There's a bit. It doesn't bear thinking. It. Yeah, you don't. Want I to say it doesn't it, bear thinking about. But, but the reason do, why place, the reason why I brought it up is that we were in that yeah. situation in Hawkes Bay. Yeah. And I don't even think we understood it at the time. Yeah. I, I think we had to look from the outside in and go, "Fuck, that was that was pretty fucking scary." And as you say, if you hadn't been in contact with your parents on the phone prior to to you talk and you couldn't drive out and see them yeah you wouldn't know how they were how are yeah. you going to find out what are you going to do send a fucking carrier pigeon out yeah i mean there's just some um i mean it's like the uh, the floods that sort of happen up in you know queensland and that they have no rain for like fucking years and all of a sudden it pisses down and it just it just the water level just comes up so quickly and just causes oh, so much devastation you know, you've really got to pick where you live, and 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 the Esk Valley that particularly got hammered, in in Hawke's Bay. I mean, it's just like a, it's like a funnel, you know, from the forestry that you know the all the slash and that that built up against the bridges, and the bridges got washed away. It was um, the devastation was just just horrendous. Um, driving up there a few weeks later, it was like a fucking nuclear bomb had gone off. Eh? it was just the houses, all the windows were blowing out. Um, just absolute devastation. Um, 
Well, you you you, you were telling me a, what was the story you were telling yeah, me last fuck. week? It was your turn to go before. This is probably going to be my turn now. Um, <laughs> Did you get the tissues out? So we, I, I, I run a barbecue competition at the West Shore Beach in sort of every September. And we, we sort of try and do a bit of a, a like a fundraising thing every when we can. And we sort of want that money to sort of go to either a good cause or somebody who's fucking, you know, struggling in that. So, um, so this year we had um, service foods on board. Um, they were selling some food, and I'd done a whole heap of barbecue. We were selling barbecue meals and all this, so we we got some cash together, and we were just going to donate it to the the cyclone relief fund, the mural fund, which yep. was just goes into the fucking pot, and you know, see you later. But there was one, um, yeah, there was one story that was um, that really sort of yeah rung true. Um, there was a family just sort of trying to escape the floodwaters. It was dark. Um. Uh, obviously, you know, because it was in the middle of the night. Middle of the night, fucking dark as fuck. All of a sudden, your house is like water up to the fucking ceilings. Yeah, and you've got to, you've just got to go. Um, young couple. Um, she was pregnant. Two daughters. Um, the, you know, the lady grabbed the daughter tried to escape and the floodwaters just just ripped her you know young daughter out of her um, arms and just how old was she oh she I, I think the the little girl was about four or five fuck swept and away just, and just gone yeah it was um they did find her fucking brutal yeah 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 yeah, yeah it was actually a, a policewoman that found her it was just yeah it was yeah fucking brutal so the the money that we raised i was able to give directly to her just before christmas last nice. year nice but Good. you know fuck that's just how do you you know how do you recover from that man as a parent the, they what? they had a um they had a son not too long after that cuz she yeah she was pregnant yeah yeah she was yeah, pregnant yeah. and the 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 little girl um the youngest girl was maybe maybe 2 3 and she's still suffering the effects, you know, counselling wise and that. But you know, how do that's you, gonna fucking how do you how do you bounce back from that? I mean, there's stories like this all the time. But I mean, when it's just you know five minutes up the road, yeah, it's fucking brutal. And um, uh, Greg Muller, who I think you know from Hastings Boys, yeah, um, he was Shout a out big, to Greg. yeah, he was a big instigator, Valley Divine uh, Restaurant in East Valley. Um, he was a big. Um, um, you know, voice for the East Valley, you know, just trying to get some, you know, some help and some support back into, you know, yeah. that region. And How they do, how how are they doing? I mean, the the region I'm talking about. Have, have oh, people... Fucking resilient people, man. Yeah. Um, well, what what else can you do? That's the thing is, like, yeah, you just no, got to fucking... Just, you just got to just... Pull your fucking pants up and get on with it. Yeah, it's just such a yeah, resilient community and we just got to look after each other. It's just... Are there a lot of people moving out of the East Valley... Because of no, funnily enough, not they just they just they rebuilding. Just, they just want to stay there. It's just there. like you know. What's the what's the, the allure about it? What's oh, no, it's a fucking beautiful place. It's just you know, there's nothing like it. It's just yeah, it's a beautiful part of the world. Um, I don't know. It's just like a big, you know. You tell me I can't do something. Well, I'm gonna fucking do everything I can to you know to do it. And it's yeah. like well, you can't tell me I can't live here. Yeah. Well, yeah. You know, I'm going to fucking live here, you know. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to fucking die here, you know. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. Just the way it is. I mean, it's my my bit of land. It's my, you mm. know, it's my bit of dirt, you know. Well, no, a few people, like a few friends of Glenn's. Yeah, have, have well, he, just, he was up on the hill, but yeah, yeah, he yeah, saw but, it all happening. But he, he's got some friends down there that, that, have, yeah. that have sold up and got out and, yeah. and they're yeah. rebuilding somewhere else. But, Which um, is fair enough. I mean, oh, for sure, you know. for sure. I mean, fuck, what is it, one in a hundred year flood? Yeah, but I mean, I mean, the, the the council fucking in the district plan allows people to build houses in these fucking places that they know fucking flood. Yeah, you know, every hundred years or so, the same thing happened in Parker Five. You know, nobody nobody died that down died down that end of you know towards Hastings and that. But yeah. fuck, it was just it was ridiculous. You know that um, oh, pe- you know people were like um, shooting around in jet boats and. And mm. boats and that, you know, rescuing people out of fucking houses off the roofs of their houses. I mean, you yeah. Know? And the council let people build houses in these floodplains. I mean, it's a natural, it's a natural 
thing that happens, you know, whether it's every hundred years or not, you know, they just fucking and the other want thing the rates money, you know, pay us all these yeah. rates, but you know, we'll tell you what to do, but just keep paying us rates. The other thing too is that there was because before we jumped on a plane to come to Hawke's Bay, we saw in the news that 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 storm cell was tracking off Australia and it was moving down and it was yeah. heading towards New Zealand. Blase, very blase about the whole thing. It's like, nah, it'll be fine. So fuck, whatever. It's a, it's a storm in a teacup. Yeah. And then even even when it hit the top of New Zealand and came down through Auckland, we're going, oh, it's going to fucking peter out. It'll peter out before it gets to Hawke's Bay. Yeah. And then once again, we were sitting at breakfast the morning after the cycle. We had it. It was. A, I remember that night. I thought the fucking roof was going to blow off. Oh really? Yeah, it was. It was upstairs. It was See, really I loud. I think it was that bad. No, so, so it. I've I've been in worse. Yeah. But that once again, very blasé about it. Yeah. Like I'm safe. We're, we're you know, we're not flooded. The roof hasn't fucking fallen off. We get up in the morning. We have breakfast. We get on our phones, like fucking nothing happened. Well, it shuts down. Yeah. I mean, we were and all this. And there's all this. Yeah, we. Our concern was trying to find a fucking coffee shop to get a hot coffee. Mm. How fucking ignorant is that? Yeah. Well, all these people have suffered through the night trying to fucking save their families from flooded houses. Well, we didn't know because there's no fucking internet, no power. We couldn't. Well, is it how were we to, to know? Yeah, That's what I'm that. saying. But the thing is that you can live in this, sh in this bubble, in this sheltered fucking life yeah. while there's devastation going on around you, you know? I mean, look, just look overseas. It's like, eh, it's fucking not my backyard. Yeah. It doesn't affect me. Why should I care? Why should I care? Yeah. You know? But as you say, fucking in one way or another, it, it'll, it'll touch you and fucking affect you in, yeah. one, in some way, you know, if you're a human being. So, but, man, you know, as I said, it was, it, it was fucking surreal. It was really surreal. And when yeah. I looked and when I saw that, that movie, it was... It just gave me flashbacks about it, and I, as I said, I was we were so happy to get on a plane, and we flew out, and saw all the fucking devastation as we flew out. You flew over it, yeah, yeah, yeah. We were flying in four days, five days earlier, completely different fucking Kodak fucking shot, you know, one's Instagram worthy, one's fucking dog shit, and it was just insane, just insane. Mate, we're here for a good time, not a long time, eh? eh? Absolutely, mate. Yeah. Um, for this weekend, all the best with the barbecue competition. Thank you. Because I, uh, I know you're the you're the only Kiwi here this week. Yeah, which you're is surprising Kiwi. enough. Yeah, I thought there'd be a few more Kiwis over here, but um, yeah. mate, mate, all that the best. Uh, good luck. I'm going to try to help you to get some sort of recognition, but I won't get up on the stage if Just you get if you get dishes. caught. <laughs> so um, yeah, enjoy yourself. Um, we're going to have a good time. We'll do. Shout out to Glenn Ratto who's coming to help us this weekend. Yep, yep. Um, shout out to uh, Wendy and uh, yep. and family Ashley for letting us family for letting us uh, come over and do this sort of stuff. And, exactly. Uh, yeah. Exactly. So, uh, mate, thank you very much for your time. I really appreciate it. Um, good chat. I, I uh, I'm happy. Yeah, I'm happy too. All right. If you're not happy, do something about it. That's a wrap, man. Yeah, thank you for tuning in and for your time. You know the vibe, I'm steady living until I die. It's a lewd state of mind, and we showed you that. Keep it authentic and real, I hope you coming back. Hey, make sure that you subscribe, cause we got it popping all the time, and it's going down. If you want to elevate, want to live a better life, keep it locked here. You know it's a lewd state of mind, let's go.